Hey, hello everybody, and welcome back to Dream Daddy. Welcome. You've, You've got, got dads. This is it. Third date. Final date. <clears throat> Let's see what we have in store for us today. <laughs> I really want to see Joseph again, but after that weird encounter with Mary... I don't know. He's my friend, right? I should be able to hang with him and it's not be weird, right? Right? Computer pings as a message flies into my inbox. It's Joseph. Hi, Michael. We should hang out. Like, actually hang out. No manual labor, no impromptu therapy sessions with sad DJs, no kids, just you, me, and the open ocean. Wait, how are we going to get on the open ocean? How are we gonna get on the open ocean, you might ask? Good question. Whoa, prescient. If you're interested, I'll meet you down by the marina and you can check out the goods, if you know what I mean. I mean my yacht. Let me know. Joseph owns a yacht? Joseph owns a yacht? I'm as surprised as you are. Hmm. You've been holding out on me, your only daughter whom you love. What, did you think that having me as a father would somehow afford you the fringe benefit of getting to go on a yacht? Hmm. What else did it get me? Uh, a healthy upbringing and a supportive environment. Yeah. yeah, okay, but what if I had that exact same upbringing and a healthy environment, but I also could go on a yacht sometimes? Relax, kiddo. Just as inviting me onto his yacht. It's going to be a yacht of fun. Ugh. I'm glad you're excited, but that doesn't mean you get to start throwing out puns. Why yacht, Amanda? Uh? <laughs> well, I gotta go get ready to go on my friend's yacht. I start to walk away, but Amanda stops me. Oh. Hey, in all seriousness, I hope you have fun. But, make good choices, okay? But, Dad! Mm. Don't stay out too late or you can't go to Jennifer Long for his birthday party this weekend. She promised me she would propose to me, but ended up going with Logan Crutchfield. Prompos. I'm not going anywhere near that party. Good bit, Dad. Good bit. <laughs> Swan back to Joseph, letting him know I'll be there. A quaint marina complete with local mob and pop shops in a small diner frame the bay. I've gone for a few walks by the bayside to stare enviously at all the nice boats before. Joseph should be around here somewhere. Gosh, this is fancy. I feel a little out of place. Hey, Michael! Joseph? Where are you? Up here! I look up. Joseph waves me from atop a huge yacht. I've never been on a yacht before. You never forget your first. Glance at the name on the side of the boat. The St. Peter, huh? Inherited this thing from my pops. Real fire and brimstone type. Loved yachts. So what's the plan, Captain? I figured since last time we went a little sideways, we could cast our lot out on the open sea, wrestle with Neptune, set sail on the seas of adventure. Kind of a goofball when you're not wrangling your kids, you know that? Joseph smiles and winks from his perch. I have no idea what you're talking about. Joseph hops down and extends a hand to me, helping me onto the yacht. <laughs> I'm thrown off by how soft his hands are. Does he moisturize or what? Michael, stop thinking about his hands. Pure thoughts. You're gonna be on a boat, alone, with Joseph, on the open ocean. It's a yacht. He's married. It's fine. This is fine. After undoing the mooring and climbing into his captain's seat, Joseph slowly takes the boat out, ringing the big steel bell with extra emphasis, even though nobody else seems to be around. Shove off, boat launching, man in boat, launching as one. The St. Peter navigates out of the marina and into open water, with Joseph doing the occasional steering flourish as the boat bobs along with the waves. He seems a lot more relaxed out here. Joseph is definitely in his element. <laughs> this is the part where we rest in Neptune, so please remove your shirt and roll in some talcum powder. <laughs> Can do. I dramatically pull off my shirt. My dad bought illuminated in the reflection of Maple Bay's rippling water. I am strong. <laughs> Not bad, we might have to tag team Neptune together. I'm suddenly worried that haven't applied a strong enough SPF sunscreen and might get a sunburn. I put my shirt back on. For a while, we watch as the trees and waves pass us by. Where are we going? Oh. A little further out, it's a lot quieter once we get out in open water. Plus, we could see whales. Whales are cool. I don't trust whales. Nothing should be that big. Hey. Noted. Joseph maneuvers the boat past some buoys, he sighs. Wish I could get out more often, but you know. Family, wife, saving souls. Link. 
So many souls. I can barely hold them all. I watched Joseph work the boat. Despite his age, he doesn't look like he's slowed down at all, and from well, how, from here I can see how toned his muscles are. In pure thoughts. Right. Joseph and I boat in silence as the bay gets smaller and smaller behind us. So I had to take a peek over the edge of the ship. The wake this thing kicks off is intense. I wonder if Joseph would ever let me water ski off of his yacht. Hey, dolphins! Joseph, there are dolphins! So you're scared of whales, but not dolphins? I feel like there's an unspoken truce between man and dolphin. It'd be more, far more comfortable riding a dolphin into battle. Dolphins are way more dangerous. They sometimes drown their babies for fun, you know. Can I trust nothing on the open ocean? I like to think that I'm pretty cool. All right, Joseph. See you with me versus the entirety of marine life. I yell out to the ocean. Uh, <laughs> my life goal is to punch as many fish as I can before I Nah. You're all spineless invertebrate. Nah. I had lobster last week and I can't wait to eat more of you. Yeah, it's more like Michael. <laughs> you tell him, Michael. <laughs> ah, and here we are. <laughs> Michael, welcome to the ocean. I look out over the vast, look out into the vast expanse of blueness. Yep, that's the ocean. I'm suddenly struck with an overwhelming sense of claustrophobia despite being in an op wide open space. I'm on a boat with a handsome man, a handsome married man, and there are whales beneath us. Nothing should be that big. It's a little daunting, isn't it? Do you trust the whales? You know there are more dangerous things in the ocean than whales, right? Like tuna. The tuna is an apex predator. What about sharks? Sharks are tight. It's the tuna you gotta watch out for. And the whales. Hey, you wanna look out wistfully over the sea with me? Joseph and I head to the bow of the ship to do some quiet contemplation. You know why? Shh. Quiet contemplation. I'm alone with my thoughts. Cool. I look out to the sea for a bit, then over to Joseph. He looks so commanding as he surveys the ocean. Feels like he really is at home on the water. Mary said to me at the bar, I can't stop thinking about it. Is she right? But she's terrible to him. He's unhappy. He deserves better. I don't know what to think about this, but I just feel so drawn to Joseph. I should say something. So, uh, about Mary. Joseph continues to stare off into the distance. It's, um, well, if you really want to know. Suddenly, I hear a sputter coming from the engine room. Just runs over to the boat controls and taps on some dials. I guess we can talk about Mary later. Oh. Okay, so... We might have a small problem. What small problem? We are out of gas. The whales are gonna get us. The whales siphoned our gas. It's okay, I can just call one of my boat buddies to come tow us back in. Joseph pulls out his phone. Just kidding, I can't do that because there's no service. I check my phone. I don't have service either. Should we just submit ourselves to the whales? Well, I do have an old radio in the office, but it's broken. Are you handy with tools? I am a dad. If a radio is anything like frantically putting together a bike on Christmas Eve, it should be no problem. Let's take a look at it and see what we can figure out. Joseph directs me toward the radio and showcases its insides. Hmm. I don't know how radios work. I think there's just some frayed wires in here. If we can reattach them, we should have a working radio in no time. We stare into the interior of the radio. I'm not entirely sure what I'm looking at. I don't think Joseph knows either. Uh, you know what? Let's just throw some stuff around in there and see what works. Oh boy! MacGyver, that radio! MacGyver, that radio. Okay, I want something to go over that. That's a condom. What?
Hey, it works! Kinda. Sure. The radio springs to life. Whoa, we did it! <laughs> Just a speech into the receiver. Hello, hello, can anyone hear me? Tries a few other channels, nobody responds. Might be a little far out. I don't think there's anyone in range. How big's the range? Well, this radio came with a boat when my dad bought it in the 60s, so not great. <sighs> That's reassuring. Now what? There's worse places to be stuck on than a yacht. Wine? <gasps> Wine? I keep a couple emergency bottles up below deck. Want to go grab some while I fiddle with the radio some more? Let's see. Wine. Wine. It's got to be around here somewhere. It's because I'm in the lounge. For an old yacht, this lounge is pretty high class with panels on everything, leather couches. It's like an old Playboy photo shoot in here. Send me the bed. Oh, a California king. Swanky. It's unmade and a little messy. Less swanky. Let's examine the floor. There are some clothes strewn around the floor by the bed. Socks, slacks, yep. Pink polo shirt. Well, I guess now I know if Joseph prefers boxers or briefs. The place seems a little lived in. Hmm. Examine on the side table. Hey, wine glasses. It must be hot in the trail, but no wine. Focus on the rest of the room. Shelf. Take a look at everything on the shelf. Photos. A few photos on the wall here. It looks like a picture from Joseph and Mary's wedding day. Nice grandpa glasses. Looking real slick there, Joe. A picture of Mary and Joseph on this very yacht. Quality 90s fashion right here. Mary still has her patented stink face, but at least Joseph seems happier on the water. Hey, it's all the dads. Looks like it's from a couple years ago. The gang's all here. Brian, Matt, Hugo, Craig, Damien, Robert. Wow, Robert's actually smiling. And wearing a sweater. That's, I know that sweater. And there's one guy in the end I don't recognize. Hugo's ex, maybe? And hey, here's Joseph go-karting with the kids. That's fun. Take a look at everything on the shelf. Books. Looks like a bunch of different Bibles on brand. A couple of old vet magazines. I guess those must be Mary's. Wait a minute. Is this... Well, well, now the hot body shoe is on the other hot body foot. I took a look at everything on the shelf. Look at the knickknacks. There's one thing Joseph does right. It's the odd stuff he puts on a shelf. Take a moment to closely examine what I think is an old submarine clock. Ah, and there's the crosses again. Boy knows there's crosses. Really cool design, too. Okay, and cabinet. That's a sturdy cabinet. A little dusty, but I bet there are some treasures in here. Fire extinguisher. Look, you can tell a lot by a man by how seriously he takes his fire safety. Nice, Joseph. Nice. Flashlights. Well, this is a solution to a different problem. Maybe we're standing out here for days and running out of electricity. We'll need these, but the chief concern right now is wine intake. Hey, it's wine. A whole drawer full of wine. It's a yacht club miracle. Twilight Rouge, huh? Come to daddy. Finally, time to get back up to Joseph. I brought the wine and glasses up to the deck to find Joseph still hunched over the radio. Michael, wine, good to see you too. Just in time for the sunset. I didn't take you for a drinker. Haven't you heard? I'm a cool minister. How cool. Oh. I can land half of my kickflips. What is that like? Four? Oh. Five on a good day. Poor me. Power pour. Whoa. Okay, time to party. We clink our glasses and drink up. <laughs> This wine's not bad. There's a hint of... Am I tasting grapes? Oh. You have a discerning palate. It might be grapes. Joseph and I lounge on the deck with our yacht wine, taking in the ocean where... The sun starts to dip below the horizon. We could be stranded out here forever. <laughs> I can't think of anyone else I'd, I'd want to be stranded with. It's just you, me, and... <laughs> all those whales. So many whales. You're killing the vibe. Oh. Revive the vibe, Michael. Generally, it takes three days in a gigantic stone door rolled in front of a tomb, but I think we can save it. Uh, uh, do you like your mysteries hot botted? It's a really rewarding series, Michael. Uh huh. Look, you have fun with your word jumbles. I will enjoy the well crafted narrative excellence of a highly regarded serial of sex books, mm. detective novels, sexy detective books featuring a hard boiled gumshoe who can't be held down by the law or by love or by the mystery of Spanish lover. <laughs> You read them too. The author really hit her stride around book 17. 
this view though. I mean, there's something a lot prettier right in front of me. Sweet, full bodied. God damn. Justify <laughs> swine so good. God damn. Gotta take another sip of wine but stop myself. Is wine an acceptable beverage in Margarita Zone? That it is, Michael. All beverages are of leisure are welcomed in the Margarita Zone. This is almost what we wanted, right? Oh. No responsibilities, no worries, other than possibly dying out here, and the whales. Oh. But yeah, I'd say we're in the zone. Joseph and I clink our wine glasses again to the margarita okay. zone. Wasted away again. If you have any shawl shakers, we can arrange them into a pentagram to summon Jim and buff it. Maybe he can save us. As youth minister, I make packs with neither the devil nor island jammers. If we're going to get off this boat, it will be by the grace of God. Oh. Or Seely did. Oh. Ha! Amen. <sighs> Our laughter dies down. We're both silent for a moment, looking into each other's eyes. Joseph leans in closer. I feel myself doing the same. This is a bad idea. This is a bad idea. I can't help but feel like doing this will only end up hurting someone else. But his face is real close to my face. Hey. Michael, I have to tell you something. Mm. Mary and I are done. I pull back. I think about the clothes strewn around the lounge, the undone bed. Are you... Living on this boat. Ugh. I I didn't want to mention it, but he sighs. Strolling back to the controls of the boat, I lean on the console next to him. Mm. We had a very long talk, and it's unsalvageable. I'm staying here until everything is sorted out. Oh, I'm so sorry. If there's anything I can do, mm. I'm fine. I'm fine, actually. It was a long time coming. For the first time in a long time, I'm seeing a path to happiness, and now I can focus on myself and stop trying to deny the things that make me happy. I need someone who will be there, someone kind and honest. And you deserve that, Joseph, you really do. Anyway, I've been having this crazy feeling there's someone who I could get in the habit of having around, someone very close to here. Is it whales? <laughs> I mean you. Oh, mm. I trying to be subtle. I think I'm picking up what Joseph's putting down. I lean forward, closing the gap between us when... Joseph grabs the receiver. Oh. Come in, come in, is anyone there? Uh, no. Over. Oh. We're standing out on open waters. We've been out here for hours. Please send help. Over. But wait, are you guys gonna kiss? I mean, what are your coordinates? Over. Mm. Michael, have you been leaning on the talk button this whole time? I look down. Oh. Oh, I definitely have been leaning on the talk button. Betrayed by my own butt again. I didn't lean on it, you leaned on it. <laughs> Neither of you were leaning on the talk button. We didn't hear anything. Over. <laughs> hey. Were you listening to us? Sir, we here at the Coast Guard are professionals. We were not doing that. But as professionals, it seems like you deserve happiness and we think it's closer than you think. Um, over. How soon could you guys be here to give us a tow? Over. We'll, uh, pick you up in the morning. Sounds like you do have some stuff to hash out. Over and out. Wait! Yeah. Silence. Nobody returns our radio calls. Yeah. I think they left. We stared at each other for a second. Yeah. Well? Just a carefully place the receiver on the table, making sure the talk button isn't pressed in. Well, okay. Just grabs me the right shirt and pulls me into a kiss. His lips are soft and sweet from the wine, and his skin is still warm for the sun. Reach for his belt and pull him even closer, running my free hand under his shirt and up his side. He pushes me against the boat's console, kissing down my neck. Oh. Come on. His hands drift to my thighs and he effortlessly picks me up. Wow. Just like carries me below deck. I'd be lying if I said I hadn't fantasized about it this, but I didn't think he'd be so aggressive. Mm. I've wanted this for so long. He throws me onto the bed. I let out a little yelp. Lots of time to kill, Michael. We better get started. Well, okay then. Oh man, I might have overdone it on the wine last night. Just a few more minutes of sleep will do just fine. Wait. I open my eyes to find Joseph's face a few inches from mine, and arms slung around my waist. He's sleeping peacefully, his hair is a little must, and his lips a little red. I think this is what I was talking about when we were discussing margaritas on finding little perfect moments of joy, just the way, just like the way the light falls across Joseph's face, or how he's holding me tight even in his sleep. 
I'm very tempted to curl up closer to him and keep sleeping, but I know the Coast Guard will probably be here soon, and I'd like to be wearing clothes when that happens. I know Joseph takes a couple shakes before he blearily opens his eyes. When he notices me hovering over him, he breaks into a huge grin. We should get dressed. Joseph pulls me in for a kiss. Do we have to? Another kiss. Stop trying to tempt me. Fine, fine. Yeah. <laughs> Coast Guard eventually shows up and tows us back to the bay. They, thankfully, keep their comments to themselves. Joseph and I step off the yacht and he walks me to my car. <laughs> I had a great time. Me too. No thanks to the whales. Nice. Shh, shh. You're on land now. They can't hurt you here. <laughs> Take care, Joseph. Oh. You too. He gives me one last kiss on the lips before he turns around and walks to his boat. Well, I've been gone an entire day. Hopefully Amanda's all right. Amanda, I'm dead. Mm -hmm. She runs up and hugs me. Mm -hmm. I was genuinely concerned about your well-being, but upon closer inspection, you seem to be okay. What happened? The yacht ran out of gas and we got stuck. But it was okay, because I was on a yacht. Mm. Weren't you scared? Your father feels no fear. Were you able to take care of yourself for the night? Yeah, just did a ton of drugs, vandalized a few cars, and then bezzled some funds for my school. All in all, pretty lucky night. Where'd you learn that from? Yeah. I learned it from you, Dad. Well, if you did, you would have funneled those funds through a legitimate cash and carry business, fudging the books over the course of years so you don't arouse suspicions from the feds. Rookie mistake, Panda. Oh. Glad you're back in one piece. Did you make good choices? Yeah. I think I did. But hey, I'm starving. Want to make sandwiches out of whatever we can find in the oh. fridge? More than anything, it pops. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, you look, you look great. That was, that was, a, that was fun. Hmm. We are the dreamiest of daddy, and we got the Margarita Zone Achievo. <sighs> Phew, I think I have everything finally set up. I mean, it should be here any minute now. I think that's our car in the driveway. Okay, gotta act natural. Be cool, be cool, be cool. Amanda walks through the door with a suspicious look on her face. Hey, Dad. Off to a good start. Mm. Something fishy? Right. What? No, I, uh, I had a crab cake for lunch. That's probably it. You're allergic to shellfish. Oh. Oh, no. I forgot again. Dad. Gosh, I'm gonna be sick. What have I done? I'm kidding. You're right. I have a little surprise for you. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. You're very bad at lying. Amanda, my dear, would you care to join me in the kitchen? Father, it would fill my heart with glee. Lead Amanda over to the kitchen table where a present lies covered under a tablecloth. It's nothing special, but I wanted you to get a little something. Graduated high school last week, and I know you told me not to make a big deal about it, but... Aw, oh, Dad, you... I dramatically whip the cloth off the table. Amanda's jaw drops. Yeah. No way! Figure you probably won't be able to get cable in the dorm, so I thought it might be nice to take a piece of home with you. A DVD box set of long-haul paranormalized road ghost truckers? This is all 19 seasons, and bonus material, including commentary with actual ghosts featured on the show. Dad, I love this. Thank you. She gives me a big hug. I'm glad you like it. Hey, you want to go hang out with me in the backyard for a bit? Toss the old oh. pig skin or something? Totally. Follow Amanda to the back door. Oh. <laughs> oh. You told me not to make a big deal, but you seem to have forgotten that my entire mission in life is to make a big deal out of your accomplishments. So consider this your graduation party. Surprise! Dad, everyone's here. Well, yeah. Everyone wanted to come and support hey. you. Is that a mac and cheese bar? Sure is, fully customizable down to the type of mac. There's an ice cream cake, the good kind with the crunchies in the middle. I don't know what to say. Don't say anything, just go have fun with your pals, all right? I'm so proud of you, Amanda. Amanda smiles and runs to her friends. I should make the rounds to make sure everyone's having a good time. First, mac and cheese. Oh no, Mary's here. With everything that's happened between me and Joseph, I should be a good host and say hi to her. But I don't wanna. Come on, Michael, you can do this. I woke up to Mary. Oh. Hey. Hey. You been good? Just peachy. I have to go over there now. That went about as well as I could have expected it to. Michael! Bad, you made it. <laughs> I don't pass up on good Mac. What do you think of the party? It's not bad. Just not bad. Oh. Yeah, it's not bad. Don't let him bait you. Don't let him bait you. Thank you for the lovely compliment. Daisy trots up. Hi, Amanda's dad. 
Hey, Brian's daughter. See? See how that feels? This is a really great party. Thank you so much for inviting us. You're very welcome, tiny child who knows how to pay a compliment. Brian and I lock eyes. This isn't over. Hey, bro! Bro! This is a real rager taking our older age into consideration. I'm trying to be in bed at a reasonable hour tonight. Don't let me get too wild. Oh. Don't worry, dude. I'll keep an eye on your fruit punch intake. You know, I'm really glad we're bros again. Me too, dude. Briar and Hazel peek out behind Craig. Hi, little ones. Hello. Hiya. Thank you for all that ice cream cake. Wait, girl, how much of that did you eat? Briar ate four pieces, ask any witness. No, I didn't. Hazel ate four pieces and wants to pin it on me because we look alike. I have your face. Nobody will ever believe you. Oh, boy. I'll uh, let you guys figure this one out. Good seeing you, Craig. Let's hang soon. Yeah? Hey. I totally tell him, Eddie. Congrats for us. Hugo comes up to me with a plate of mac oh. and cheese. Mm, the perfect cheddar to mac ratio. Beautiful work, Michael. Thanks, Hugo. You know, I'm really pleased to see Amanda go into her dream school. I'm glad she turned it around for finals. Me too. That scholarship money will really help. Amanda walks by and pretends not to see Hugo. Amanda, come say hi to your old teacher. Hey! Congratulations on graduating. I know you're going to do great things at our school. Haha, <laughs> yeah, thanks. Amanda starts to back away. Wait, I just realized you're not my teacher anymore, so I don't have to be afraid of talking to you. You no longer hold power over oh. me. You're right. Go forth, adult. I can no longer give you detention. Yeah, I'm going to break anything I want, and there's nothing you can do about it. Are you still mad at me about that time I gave you detention for breaking my globe? Nope. Ah. And I'll have you know that the globe didn't even fit to the basketball hoop at the fish place, so... She'll fit in the college just fine. Hey. Hey! <sighs> Robert gestures vaguely to the snack table. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Yep. <laughs> See you later. Hey, man. Man! Let me know when Amanda leaves for college. I'll have a fresh batch of the talking banana breads ready for her. Thank you. I know she'll love it. What a splendid garden party. My deepest thanks for extending an invitation to my son and I. The icebox cake is divine. Yeah, thanks, dude. Good cake. Thanks for coming by. The sun is setting and everyone seems to have eaten their fill as the party starts to wind down and take a seat next to Joseph. Jeffus. Jo Jeffus? Joseph, it's so great to see you again. Great party. I should have you organize our next youth group mixer. My dance skills are ready whenever you need them. Hey, if you aren't busy this weekend, I was thinking we could maybe catch a movie or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that sounds like it would be fun. This feels weird. It doesn't feel like it did on the yacht. So, uh, I guess things are still friendly with Mary? Yeah, I wanted to talk to you about that. Just of size. We talked, and we talked for a long time. And there was some yelling and some crying, but ultimately, there was reconciliation. I'm sorry, Michael. I have to make this work with Mary. Hmm. I know. I shouldn't have... I didn't mean to hurt you, and I'm really sorry you got caught up in all this. I just felt so alone lately. Not even sure I'm doing the right thing here. Hmm. You've come to mean so much to me, and I'll never forget all of those beautiful moments we shared together. But I have to thank you. In a way, this whole thing with you helped me realize that I still love my wife very much. Oh, that's great. Hmm. No, this probably isn't what you wanted to hear, and I'm sorry if you were hoping for something different, but... This is where my life is, and I need to do right by my family. But hey, just as squeezes my hand, nice. we'll always have margaritas on. Joseph stands up. Take care, Michael. You too, Joseph. Joseph walks off. I, man, did I do something wrong? Was there another way this could have ended if I had done things differently? I walk over to the half-melted remnants of the ice cream cake and shove a fork full in my mouth. This ice cream cake is my new boyfriend. Us guests begin to make their way out of the party. I mean, it wanders over and sits down next to me. Killer party pops. What can I say? I was inspired. So, I, uh, I also have something for you. Oh. For me? Why? To be com not to be completely genuine about my feelings or wants or anything, but <laughs> growing up wasn't easy. But it could have been a lot harder if it wasn't for you. Dad, you've been there for me through everything. There's, There's been times in my life where you were my only friend. Mm -hmm. I was really scared of going to college and being so far away from you, but... I realize that everything you've done for me has been to prepare me for this, and I'm ready. I wouldn't be who I am today without you. Don't cry. Don't cry. I swear to God, Michael, I, if you cry again, you're the best, Dad. I love you. And I'm crying. Anyway, that wasn't enough. That was enough emotional vulnerability for one day. <laughs> Present time. Amanda hands me a tiny wrapped package. I tear the wrapping off to find a 
frame picture of me and Amanda. It's us. Hmm. Kind of shocking all of our photo albums are just pictures of me, huh? I figured we needed at least one together before I leave. Amanda, thank you. Watching you grow up has been the happiest experience of my life. You're such a talented, intelligent young woman, and I'm so excited to see what the future holds for you. Knock I'm dead, kid. <laughs> Always do. Yeah. And I share a hug. This is only the beginning, Pops. Plenty more memories for us down the road. Memories to make and stuff to break, right? <gasps> oh, I'm going to break so much stuff. Intentionally and unintentionally, you're probably going to have to pay for most of it. It would be my honor. Matt and I wave bye to the party goers as they leave. We sit together and watch the sun slowly dip beneath, below the horizon. I'm glad you made some friends. Yeah. Hmm. I know that's maybe not what you were looking for, but these people care about you. I love you, Dad. We'll always have each other. You're right. It's gonna be hard at first, but this is the next chapter in our story, and I would be nervous about it, but I know you're always gonna be looking out for me the same way I'm always, I'll am i always be looking out for you. Team Myers, Team Myers. <laughs> And there we go. <laughs> Brian is Barry. Joseph is Aaron, obviously. I knew Brian Wecht was Quizmaster Quinn. Robert Stan. Val is Susie. Uh, who the hell is Val? Oh, Robert's daughter, isn't it? Yeah. That's it. <sighs> and there's the final dad picture with the greetings from Margarita Zone. And that is every dad unlocked. It's been a journey. But we did it. Craig. Matt. Robert, Hugo, Brian, Damien, and Joseph. We got them all. I hope you all enjoyed this. And we got some fun surprises coming for you very, very soon. So, until the next time, everybody. Hey, funky people.